is Nur Amira Sahira binti Muhammad Abdul Rahman. My name is Nur Aina binti Nofaiwis. My name is Nur Aikla Bazlim binti Abdul Razak. Nur Alia Kaisara binti Shamsu Kamal. My name is Nur Shazwani binti Abdul Rashid and we are from Group 3. First and foremost, praise and appreciation to Allah and the Almighty for His showers of blessing during our study effort which has enabled us to successfully complete the research. I would like to convey my heartfelt appreciation to Madam Romala Binti Ismail, lecturer of Principle of Economics, for providing us with the chance to do research and for offering vital advice during this process. Her energy, vision and determination have left an indelible impression on us. I do want to thank my groupmates who supported each other a lot in acquiring different information, collecting data and coaching each other from time to time in producing this project, despite their busy schedules. I am going to talk about the background and demographics of Indonesia. Southeast Asia and Oceanus Indonesia, also known as the Republic of Indonesia, are located between the Indian and Pacific Oceans, Sumatra, Java, Sulawesi and portions of Borneo and New Guinea are among the more than 17,000 islands that make up this archipelago. Indonesia is the meeting place of the world's two largest populations, which are Melanesians in the east and Asian in the west. Bahasa Indonesia is their national language. The majority religion in Indonesia is Islam. 90% of people identify as Muslim in Indonesia. In Indonesia, the legislature is chosen by the president. There are 38 provinces in it, 9 of which have special status. Indonesia is expected to rise quickly in 2032 by 5.2% due to the reopening of the economy after COVID-19 and increases in commodity prices, with growth expected to be maintained at 4.9% on average throughout the medium term. 2023 until 2035. In the third quarter, Indonesia's economy grew at its strongest rate in more than a year, supported by increased government spending and improved investment. So today I will explain about microeconomic issues of the country which is Indonesia. Unemployment means the amount of people who are available and looking for work but are unable to obtain employment. This is the unemployment rate in Indonesia from 2018 to 2020. According to the data, the percentage unemployment people in 2020 is higher than previous year because of pandemic COVID-19 in March 2020, which is 7.1%. COVID-19 pandemic had a disproportionately large impact on workers. This pandemic had an impact 99.12 million persons of working age, 2.56 million losing their jobs, 0.76 million giving up looking for work, 1.77 million experiencing temporary unemployment and lastly, 24.03 million having their work hours reduced. In quarter 3, 2022, Indonesia's rate decreased to 5.86% from 6.49%. Now, I will explain about impact of the macroeconomics on Indonesia to economy. According to a forecast from the Asian Development Bank, Indonesia's economy decreased to 2.5% in 2020 from 5.0% in previous year. The pandemic's effect on commercial activity had caused a decline in private consumption, investment and export. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Indonesia has become a one of the countries in Southeast Asia that has a high unemployment rate compared to other Asian countries. The issue of unemployment does not only occur in Indonesia but also involve almost most countries around the world. Unemployment not only affects the country's economy but also affects people's life. Among the effects of unemployment on society are financial problems, mental health problems, poverty and so on.
Unemployment also can lead to the criminal case such as robbery, theft and suicide. Therefore, the government need to play a big role by providing job opportunity to the community, improving their skill, organizing career program and so on. As a result, the unemployment rate can be reduced and the country economy can flourish. Everyone already knows about the problems that Indonesia has to face. Now let's find out about the physical policy in Indonesia. From my perspective, the rate of unemployment will very certainly rise dramatically during the epidemic. As a result, Indonesia's economy remains poor. It prevents Indonesia from competing with other countries. The formulated strategies and policy measures needed to reduce the level of unemployment is to achieve the goal. It can overcome by reducing tax, improving active labor force participation will most probably need change in tax and expedited policies to give financial incentive to work, such as decreasing marginal tax, rates for second earners and providing employment support service, such as low-cost, high-quality daycare. Another the option that may help reduce physical uncertainty is to relate long-term physical goals to their underlying drivers such as life expectancy in the case of pensions. Second is spending of government. Government can help by prevent additional job loss, threaten protection for let off workers and promote job recovery such as continued promising streams which is lead, providing direct wage subsidies to allow workers to keep their contracts while ensuring a financially sound copy strategy for the business. Ensuring a regulatory shift to limit worker dismissals on COVID-19 grounds, providing assistance to MSMES and household enterprises. Understand of these problems, we have long-term and short-term strategies to address them. Long attempt to solve challenges include improving human resource quality enhancement. While in the short term, this epidemic include increasing the effectiveness of existing initiatives to combat unemployment and poverty. That's all for physical policy that used by the country of Indonesia to overcome the macroeconomy issues. Definition of monetary policy is a country's central bank uses a set of instruments to regulate the total amount of money in circulation, foster economic expansions, and implement measures like adjusting interest rates and altering bank reserve requirements. Who is in charge? In terms of monetary policy, Bank Indonesia is in charge to establish and preserve rupiah stability. The rupiah has two dimensional stability. First, inflation measures rupiah stability or the stability of prices for goods and services. Second, is how stable the rupiah's exchange rate is in comparison to other currencies. In order to increase Indonesia's economy, Bank Indonesia implements expansionary monetary policies from the Federal Reserve. Beginning in January 2020, Bank Indonesia had cut the 7-year reserve repo rate by a total of 100 basis points to 4%. By increasing interest rates, Bank Indonesia can implement tight bias monetary policies which can affect aggregate demand and reduce inflationary pressures. It is efficient and speedy. Lower the interest rates can make it easier for families to borrow the money they need. It includes of expensive items including furniture, gadgets and vehicles. Additionally, lower the interest rates can increase the accessibility of borrowing for the enterprises. In conclusion, we learned a lot more than we could have imagined about the country of unemployment concerns during COVID-19 in Indonesia. From the research on background of Indonesia that provides us an information the present condition in Indonesia as the complete nation to its economy that show an incredible growth in statistics. Unemployment happens when people are competent and wanting to work but unable to find suitable positions. The unemployment rate is the percentage of the labor force that is jobless. The most effective approach for reducing this sort of unemployment is to address the underlying causes of unemployment. Expansionary physical and monetary policy should be pursued to boost aggregate demand and minimize cyclical unemployment. Everyone is becoming concerned about this issue. As a result, the government must move quickly to address these issues. That's all from our group. Assalamualaikum.